Are we in? Yeah, we're on. Why? <laughs> Patrick, turn it down. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Who's out there? Hopefully, Anybody? somebody. Nobody. Not, uh, one, you. <laughs> it might actually showed up. Yeah, it's, I see one uh, one person's watching. Altman's on probably too. Oh uh, yeah. That may be actually who's on because I don't yeah, think I can get I, on. I think I see him. Well, good morning. Welcome to five forty fifteen. I'm Chris. This is John. We're here to talk about cool, innovative things for the government. We're five forty dot co. We're a group of dedicated professionals that want to build things to help the government innovate, like startups. And this whole idea of 54015, it grew out of a Facebook post that John put on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. He was reading through FedBizOps. Anybody that's done that knows that FedBizOps can be a little dry. And he put something up on Facebook about saying, wow, I wish I could get an elevator pitch of these opportunities you know, so I don't have to right. fall asleep reading through these things. So kind of started a dialogue between John and I about how we might be able to do something like that. And this is what grew out of it. And it's not going to be, let's talk about FedBizOps opportunities necessarily, although we are going to talk about a few things today, but really just an opportunity to get a dialogue going and talk about interesting, innovative things that we're seeing going on in the federal government, things that, that might help the government get stuff done. Get shit done, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, and I think, you know, it... Um what was the worst thing that could happen? We looked at some more opportunities in more detail. We looked out correlated what was going on in tech news and then why not share it with everybody? Right. And, and you know, just talk about the things we're tracking, things that we think are kind of cool, things that we think uh, may make a difference and maybe different approaches to things as well as we read some of the RFPs and then really liken it to what's going on in the tech world. So Absolutely. So I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna start with something I found a couple of days ago on FedBizOps. Uh, it was uh, a request for information that came out from the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, interestingly, uh, it's about uh, finding alternatives for uh, personal identif uh, identity verification, or PIV. Um, the uh, requirement for that comes from Homeland Security Directive from the early 2000s. Anybody that works in the government, in the government space, has a uh, as a, a civil servant or as a contractor knows, you have a CAT card, and that's used to control access to just about everything. Uh, the RFI that they've put out uh, is looking for alternatives to that for uh, some specific applications, and um, specifically it's, it's for uh, use in clinical facilities. And it was, it was interesting the way they structured their RFI. One of the things they talked about were the different problems that exist in their clinical environment and they talked a lot about the typical office worker and how a typical office worker um, doesn't necessarily need to switch roles from being a care provider to someone who's injured or sick to then being somebody that has to access information for tasks. That a typical office worker doesn't work in a sterile environment. The typical office worker doesn't deal with potentially harsh chemicals or different types of uh, biohazardous types of types of things uh, and frankly a typical office worker um, if something is wrong with their their CAC access their ability to access systems it's not necessarily going to have a detrimental impact immediately on somebody's health or well-being so those are unique things about their environment and what they're saying is that, that the the traditional identity card approach isn't really working for them. Um, their uh, clinicians are using it to get into different parts of their facilities, uh, but they're doing it, you know, they, as you might imagine, in a, in a healthcare facility, you know, there's a lot of running around, going from room to room, and they're wearing out their badge readers. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if there's a problem, they have, they've, they've set up, they say their they're requirement, if there's some access problem, it has to be resolved within 10 minutes. Well, in a healthcare situation, 10 minutes could be the difference, uh, sure. you know, make a real difference in somebody's life. So I think it's unique and interesting that, that the VA is pursuing this, but as I read it, I also thought about what other use cases are there out in the government where you have people that aren't typical office workers. So it is focused on VA specifically. This one is specific yeah. for VA, yeah. but 
you know, you could you think about uh, obviously there's you know combat scenarios, but you know sure. beyond that, you've got you know, USDA. You have inspectors that go out to you know inspect facilities. You know, what sort of access do they need? Um, uh, I thought of Park Service, sure. Homeland Security, TSA, and as you know, as as mobile and the ability to access systems continues to spread, sure. that need to access information and provide that that identity identity verification is going to become more and more important. So I think this is going to be an interesting opportunity to track uh, to see what sorts of things come uh, come out of it. You know, hopefully there will be some some public forums where there will be some open discussion about different ideas around uh, personal identity. When's it due? Uh, it's due. I want to say it's the middle of uh, middle of May. That's when the uh, the RFI oh, will like a little bit of time. Yeah. So if you guys are listening out there, you know, maybe I'll jump on that one if that's your space. I think you know. Um, yeah, I don't care. Five minutes has passed. <laughs> Sorry, off camera. Um, so, I mean, let's face it. I think that you know, cat cards are a pain in the ass sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, I think that's that's so why I'm assuming it's got to have two factor off though, right? Yes. So they're really focused on making sure yep. that they're, they still maintain that. Um, that type of verification, that validation, that authorization, um, but I know, and I and I think I think we talked about it a little bit before going on air um, that there was some of it around mobile and things like that mm -hmm. as well, different devices, which we really haven't seen that that real those good solutions for those devices. So um, you know, I think that's interesting. I think I think you know we're going to continue to see that evolution in the cat card whole thing. I, I mean, I don't know if they call it, I guess they call it cat card and all the other agencies too, right? Common access card. So um, it'd be interesting to keep tracking that one in general. Yeah. So. Well, um, let me just jump over to sure. online, sure. So um, one solution I actually found of interest looking through some uh, Fed biz ops was around um, the, is, is under the Department of Defense. It's um, it's the Rapid Reaction Technology Office under, so that would be under OSD, um, you know, AT, that would be under uh, ATNL. Um, basically what, so this, the, the title of it was RRTO, so Rapid Reaction Technology Office Social Media Solutions. Um, and it's kind of an RFI stage. You're trying to uh, gain insight into potential commercial solutions or, or technology design patterns, the way I'd read it, um, that will meet different needs around social media monitoring. Um, and it was it was really interesting. Actually, when I read this one, I thought, okay, when's it due? Because we really should actually put a, a little RFI on this one, really. It's actually, I think, only 100 words, too, so it's a low lift. Um, but you know, it has the kind of traditional things that we're seeing in a lot of um, the agency's goals of gathering data and making sense of data, right? And in this case, it's social media focus, but um, you know, we can we can liken that to a lot of different data sets. They talk a lot about you know, kind of the concept of harvesting data, um, both from traditional social media sources as well as non-traditional me social media sources. So that caught my attention because, you know, getting it from traditional is pretty easy. Getting it from non-traditional sometimes may require censoring and things like that, like on IoT devices and stuff, and things that you might not have direct access to, maybe unless you're the NSA. And so, um, and then kind of making sense of it, right? Visualizing it, um, interpreting it, uh, applying uh, predictive analytics. The typical stuff we see in the laundry list of harvesting and making sense of data, you know, in the big data buzzword world. So, you know, I thought this was real interesting. And then also redaction too, so the whole security side, right? So the same thing we get into all the time. Um, I, I see this as a, as, a, as a great opportunity. I think one thing that they did nice on this one that I liked was um, they're not, a lot of times I see RFIs, RPs in this space that kind of think that they're gonna buy like one big solution and it's gonna all come together in one big box. And it just, it's, there's just too much stuff glommed together there, right? So I think this one's, you know, good because they're, they're gathering insight into the you know, various, small pieces of the puzzle that they could pull together at a later date to make a complete solution. And I think it's gonna give uh, any product vendors that are that have solutions, and I think you know, techn you know any integrators that possibly have different design patterns or where they've done some R&D and pulled things together, I think uh, could really play in this one. And honestly, I think we may have to do something with that API on this one, so. Yeah. Um, definitely going back to the Twapper Keeper days. Cool. Cool. All right. Back over to you. Uh, the, uh, the second one I wanna talk about is actually one out of the Marine Corps. Um, and it's not so much the opportunity itself, but just again the kind of the, the thought process that kind of got me got me thinking about. Um, it was really it's a real straightforward RFP. Um, they're looking for a professionally designed online registration web portal, which sounds very straightforward. It's got a, um, a really short period of performance. Um, you know, it's really uh, you know. 
a real real straightforward RFP. But when I when I read it, one thing that struck me was you know they've you know gone out um, you know through um, I don't remember if this was on FitBizOps or if this was on eBuy, but they're um, you know going through the you know kind of the traditional government procurement process for something that's really straightforward mm -hmm. and. Um, I would think there would be an opportunity for the government to set up, you know, in this, you know, in this um, um, time of things being as a service, that there ought to be some sort of a of a government service available, like the government printing office, mm. to do these types of things. Sure. Uh, because you know, hey, I need to stand up a website to you know um, manage registrations for an event. You know that we're going to have, or an industry day. There ought to be some common service set up somewhere in, you know, I don't know if it would be in GSA or, uh, you know, in the case of the DoD, maybe Washington Headquarters Service, someplace right. like that. DISA that you know just sort of has a platform, and you know, in this day and age, people design their own websites all the time. I'm, right. I'm not a technologist. I built websites, right. you know, and so um, you know, there ought to be some some real easy, straightforward tools that government folks can can get access to without having to go through, you know, a lengthy contracting process, um, you know, evaluate proposals and go through all, all of those, all of those administrative costs, you know, and just be able to go somewhere, build a website, stand it up, have it be compliant with all of the security requirements, but also give them access to uh, the types of, you know, software, website development tools that, that we use in our personal lives all the time. Sure. So think it maybe even an opportunity for a vendor out there that already has kind of a cloud solution or is it really focused on having an on-prem where they want to have it installed in their environment do you think it, it, it didn't it, go and it, do it. It, didn't, it didn't specify it just has to be mm -hmm. secure online registration I'm a, they didn't really talk too much about what they're going to do use it for but I'm assuming it's getting people to register for events maybe sure. in industry days maybe you know maybe if they're having um, having their own conference or sure. something like that so they may have to process some payment information or something like that but um, you know, maybe meetups should just probably bid on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a, I mean, exactly. really, right? I mean, there's so many solutions out there like yeah. that. If it's if it's okay to be in the cloud, right? I think. Yeah. Um, and then we got to get fed ramped all those other things. But you know, it seemed like there would be a perfect opportunity for somebody just to buy. That'll almost be it. Seem like a buy concept or a simple build that, that could continue to be repeated and added to service, like you said. So. Yeah, but but uh, you know, again, I think you know why even in in the in the government environment in the government cloud couldn't there be Sure. The capability. Of yeah, like no, that. right. Make it real, real easy. Yeah, either like that or, or like they did with Adobe where they brought some of that collaboration stuff into like DCO and stuff, right? So, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I think there's some, it's a simple one. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. What's that one do? This one is do, you keep asking me these due dates. Well, because I, because I, 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 I actually didn't mention mine, so. I didn't write down the due date because I was like, we're not going to bid on this one, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty important, I guess, then, because yeah. we're not going to do it. But I mean, I think for the, I think we're trying to always bring things when we talk about them yeah. here. You know, within a week or two, they're, they're due. I mean, I think hopefully we'll catch some of these yeah. a little earlier in the processes. Yeah. And talk I can tell it. you the period of performance starts June 1st, so. Shit. Okay. <laughs> it's too soon. <laughs> too soon. Um, okay, well, we'll go on to the next one I got. Um, so this one was actually, um, this one caught my attention. Uh, it's for our friends at Consular Affairs and Department of State. Um, it's for automated face recognition. And I thought I had read some article weeks ago with regards to Facebook's API on this. But once I did some research on this, I, I simply cannot find it. So I may have dreamed it or, I don't know, I read something different, maybe another API out there. Um, but the bottom line is this is a, um, it's a RFI. Uh, Department of State is looking for additional like vendors potentially to to provide a facial recognition service. Um, it would have to integrate with a lot of their already current back office stuff that they already have, uh, facial recognition or faces that they already have on file, of course, uh, in their data stores and then um, ingest those and then do lookups. So it's a lot of kind of adding, ingesting and, and searching um, and have to obviously do it fast. Um, first up, my first thought was, this is something like Facebook should just bid on this stuff, right? I mean, but they got other things to worry about. But I mean, they're doing so much research in this space. And then and I started Googling around and, and looking at GitHub and stuff like that. There's a lot of open source, like facial recognition things out there right now. Um, but I didn't realize how, like, I, I kind of saw that as a space I didn't really know. And when I was doing the research, I was like, wow, there's just, there's a lot of simple libraries that have some simple algorithms, which I'm sure are not appropriate to the state. I'm sure they're looking for something a little bit more advanced. 
Um, but I would imagine there's some other ones that are that are probably pretty solid. So um, you know, and then there's a lot of also cloud APIs in this space too. So I think there's a there's a, it's an interesting market that that could possibly go after it if they can maybe port some of their cloud stuff to an on-prem solution. Because I'm sure they're going to want that. The only thing um, never want to say anything negative about an RFP, of course, but console affairs, if you're listening, um, this one thing about continuing to perpetuate SOAP web services, stop that, right? Rest, rest, let's start do that. I saw some integration points with rest in there. Got a couple people cheering out in the background here. Um, but there was one clear point that, that, it, um, that it mentioned it had to have it. And I'm guessing it's probably because of some private integration point that they already have and they have to integrate with something else. Um, but let's, you know, I think let's continue to make sure we're moving forward there. But um, overall, it looks like a fun one. If I, If there was more time in the day, both this one and the other one would probably be something I think we should, you know, it'd be interesting to dive into this one as a hackathon and see how mm -hmm. close you could get to a service on this idea because, um, they, or, or somebody could wrap, or wrap somebody else's API. So, um, week, oh, actually this one's due May 1st. This one's actually got a little time. So um, anybody in facial recognition, APIs, startup land, or traditional SIs, look at it, it's pretty cool. Okay. So our next feature is we're going to turn the camera over to our colleague Mark. He's going to talk about an interesting <laughs> story that he found. Yeah, so showing him on camera at the last minute. Right? <laughs> this is awesome. So um, in some of the government space, we we saw that uh, the White House has hosted their first tech startup or tech meetup, um, which is. Big news, I guess, having them kind of realize a need to have um, more tech in government space. Um, I think that's pretty big, and that it kind of gives an opportunity to get technologists uh, interested in working in the government or for the government. So I thought that was pretty interesting. When, when are they? Is that that's an event coming up specifically? Did I miss that? No, they've already hosted their event, their, okay. their meetup. Okay, got it. So. Um, is there any next steps on that or I think uh, the next step would be probably trying to get um, more funding or some way of hosting more maybe federal buildings to host hackathons or meetups at more federal buildings um, kind of promote that space oh, that's great that's great yeah yeah that's I mean that's really um, I think that's cool because you know one of the things that you know in the time that I've been here at 540 learning more about community and how um, in the you know, in the commercial world in particular there is a you know in, in technology a real sense of community and sharing and you know trying to um, you know rising tide floats all boats right. as they say and it's um, I, I, I think it's it's a uh, uh, a uh, Different sort of concept in the inside the Beltway, sort of the government environment, right. because we tend to be, you know, very insular and, you know, pr protect, you know, protect what's ours and not share. And I think what we're doing here today, I, you know, had some people say, well, "Why are you guys doing that? You're going to tell your competitors about opportunities that you guys are interested in?" But you know, it if it if if somebody's got a better idea out there right. and can help our government. Be more efficient and be more innovative. As a taxpayer, I want to see that happen. I think it's in our best interest as a whole. And as you said, all boats will float in the end of this yeah. game. I mean, there's a there's a, a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of opportunity for all of us. And we just got to keep working together to better things. It's yeah. awesome. So, uh, so we do have one question from the audience. Oh, yeah? It comes from uh, Killer uh, BGT. Can't totally imagine, ringer question. Can't imagine so. who that is. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to know what does five forty mean. Right, so so when we, 540 started a couple years ago, small consulting firm, technology consulting firm. Chris kind of did the intro at the beginning. Um, 540, what is the, the number is the sum of the internal angles of the Pentagon. And since a lot of the work we were beginning to do right at the beginning and, and prominently uh, as our first kind of starts of work, um, it was kind of named after that specific sum of the internal angles, so sum of uh, five times 108. So um, that was the original. Um, I think it's kind of now kind of just turned into a number, um, but uh, it is where the roots are. As I think you said it one time, Chris. So yeah, uh, that's what it was. Very cool. Thanks for the question, Killer BGT. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, just we're, we're this is the first time we've ever done Meerkat, right? So yeah. at, I mean, period. Like 
I think all of us were even scared to even like do it as a uh, ourselves. Um, so um, it was inter I'm interested. It's interesting to watch on the screen over here how the lag. There's actually the, what the the viewer is actually seeing is is definitely lagged a good bit. Hmm. Um, at least that's the way I saw it for a moment. So um, just something that we learned a little bit, Mirka. Yeah, that's interesting. Right. So to wrap up, I just want to mention one other opportunity oh, yeah, okay. that I stumbled across uh, on FBO. This was one from the Navy. It's a requirement from the Naval Postgraduate Schools. Uh, School of Operational and Information Sciences. So this is one of these oddball ones? It is a little bit of an oddball. They are looking for a quantity one throwable robot. I want to bid on that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, that's... So, I had this... That's not safe for work awesome. <laughs> yeah. I had this vision of, like, getting a C-3PO that's about this tall yeah. that you can, I guess, wing at a, at a problem and, you know, He'll fly over there and he'll do translation or whatever he does. But it's actually a thing. It's actually these. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, is there whatever. companies that actually do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Google throwable robot and you'll find their pictures on there. These little, they look like, um, kind of look like uh, kind of a little Roomba vacuum things. We got to buy one. And, we got to buy one. Yeah. So. What is it? Is it um? Are they, are they specific? Uh, uh, are they expensive one? I you know what? I didn't look at the prices. Yeah, okay. So, um, but. Oh, somebody's putting questions up. Um, can you buy them? I mean, you can. You can I'm assuming you can buy them, yeah. right? Yeah. Do they want like more than one? They're just they're, they're just, uh, they're, they're just buying one. Only Might one. Might be a little expensive, though. Yeah. Only one. <laughs> That's oh. pretty cool. I, th I think you know, as we were kind of prepping for this, think you know, you brought that uh, opportunity up. I'm not sure if you had thought we were going to put or talk about it, but I think once you kind of dive into some of these, and I don't do that on a day to day, Chris, you do that a little bit more. Some of the other team members do. It's really actually great to kind of dive in and see what's really going on out there. Um, and uh, it's a lot of us are always on billable and client stuff to take that time to do it. And um, this is going to be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think it's great to share with the community too. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Well, I guess we're going to record this or, or take this recording and throw it out as well. Yeah. Like maybe the first blog post or something like that. Maybe. Maybe something like that. second. Okay. Second. All right. Well, that wraps up our. Uh, we we did get another question from. Uh, it was also from Killer BGT. Wants to know if we have a company mascot. We do. Uh, Hitch is. Oh, he's. They're all, Hitch is being held back. Uh, <laughs> Specifically. By, by by Beth, she's keeping him under control. So, but we do have a company mascot. He's very handsome. So awesome. So thanks for joining us this morning. If anybody did join us. If not, we'll, watching on a podcast yes, later, a video cast. Yes, yeah. and you know, we'll catch you on the next one. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. That was cool. Boom.